Hi guys, it's Sean with Crema, and I wanted to make a short video today to show you some of the cool features I've been experimenting with in Figma. Um, Figma is new to me, it's new to our team in general, but I've been really impressed with the transitions and animations that you can do in the prototyping. So what I want to do today is show you uh, something I've been experimenting with, uh, which is a slider. Um, so we're going to make a realistic slider in Figma. Um, I've been so impressed with uh, just the prototyping that you can do that goes far beyond anything you can do inside um, Sketch plus Envision. So I often find myself thinking, man, I wonder if you can do this transition in Figma. I was like continuously pleasantly surprised that a lot of the stuff I threw at it could be done. Now, at this point, I shouldn't be surprised because it is so powerful that um, a lot of the stuff I think of is pretty easy to do inside the prototyping, and it's oftentimes exactly like you think it should happen. So what I have here is a little demo that I can show of sort of this stylized slider. You'll see I have four frames here. Um, what we can do today, like what you can take away, is really doable in, I think, two frames and just a few components. So I'll show you how that works. But right now I have a slider sitting at zero. Um, I have that slider maxed out to the far right. The, the track is filled in with this green here. Um, this one is similar frame to this, but I have a button that appears that you can interact with, and then you have the success state here. Um, and you'll see too, like if I go into this prototyping tab over here, things that I hover over or click on, you can see that those are all the same elements across these frames. And so that's how any of these transitions and animations between these screens can happen. So this all happens with um, Smart Animate. So really you just have to lay some things out on the screen, make sure things are named consistently, and the tool does a lot of the work for you. So I'll show you what this, um, this demo looks like. So I've designed it to work and look good on mobile. So you can start by grabbing the slider here, and as you pull, you'll see the numbers tick up. Um, and I sh I'll show you how that works as well. Um, that's another frame that's moving vertically while the slider is moving horizontally. So that's that, and as soon as it locks into place there, there's a delayed response to the button, it appears. You click on that, and it kind of has this animated success screen. Um, so that's what I've done to kind of um, illustrate how that works. But again, what you can do and making a realistic slider can really happen in just a couple frames. So right now I just hit F, shortcut for uh, frame. And frames in Figma, as I've learned, are incredibly flexible. They're like groups, but you can add constraints to them. Um, but they're also a lot like artboards. So um, I'm just going to zoom in here. So I've made a frame, and I'm going to make this really big and ugly um, and super contrasty just so you can see what's actually happening here. But basically, uh, I'm going to draw a rectangle. Again, this is like way chunkier than you'd ever want something like this. Um, and so I'll go ahead and place it in the center of the screen here, in the center of the frame. So that's our track. Um, that's the default state of the track. You can select it and hit uh, Command D. I'm on Mac, so uh, another cool thing about Figma is that it's uh, system agnostic. Um, so the commands, the shortcuts would be something similar but different keys on Windows. But basically I've just duplicated that shape um, of that track. I'm going to color it that green that I was using, um, but then I'm going to shorten it down to a single pixel. So you can grab this and shrink it down, um, but it will be left aligned, so if you just come over here and hit 1, it'll shrink down to that size. So the reason I'm doing this is because you'll see that it transitions from this uh, this really like almost empty state here to that full green bar, so I'll show you how that works. <clears throat> and then for our slider, I'm hitting uh, O for our circle here. And uh, we'll make that big and fat too. And I'll color that the same green as, as we had. You can even do like a drop shadow or something to show that it's interactive. So I'm just going to line that up with this, um, with that track there and bring it to the far right and line it up there as well. So this is the first frame. Um, and you'll see that this is really everything you need to make a realistic uh, slider. So I'm just going to select that frame. You have all the elements here that you need. So that filled in bar, that's one pixel now, wide will be on top of the track, and obviously the, the little handle will be on top of all of that. So I'm going to hold Command or Option Shift and drag that frame out because we want everything to effectively be the same. As long as it's named the same, so ellipse 2, ellipse 2, rectangle 7, rectangle 7. Um, actually, for posterity, we could do something like this uh, so that 
These are explicitly different. Rectangle 7 was repeated, so I don't know how that would animate. So that's our fill shape. So if I had done this previously, you wouldn't have to rename things twice. But as it is, I will do this real quickly. Cool. Um, frame names don't really matter at this point, as long as the components or the shapes are named something unique and consistent. So basically, we're just going to replace this and drag that to the far side. Now I'll look how wide this is, so it's 465 pixels wide. That's the track. We're going to go to our fill and add that same width. So now it's fully filled in like that. <clears throat> so here's the cool thing. The only thing we, did, we need to do is have two frames, six, well really just three kind of elements, and then the tool, Figma, will do the rest of the work. We just, we're going to have it, well, we don't necessarily want it wrapped in a frame. So we'll just say none for our prototyping frame. So all I'm going to do is select this handle element, and I'm going to drag it over to here, and you've seen I've, you see I've connected or clicked onto the prototyping tab here. That allows you to start this, um, this transition animation type of uh, workflow. So um, we're going to do on drag. And another cool thing is you don't have to say on drag to the right, on drag up or down or left. Um, it's going to interpret that for us. So on drag, um, we're going to transition from this frame to this frame. And as long as Smart Animate is selected, that's all you're going to have to do um, to make this realistic slider go from left to right. Now, if we want it going back the other way, we're just going to repeat this process. Click on the handle here, drag it and say go to this frame on drag. We want to navigate to frame one. Um, using Smart Animate. So because I already have uh, a prototype clicked up here, I'm going to drag this little play arrow over to our new frame. That way, when I hit the play button, this uh, prototyping tab will change. So we're here now. And so I'll click on this, and you'll see that as we drag it, that bar is filling in, and it gets locked over to the right side here. And because I've clicked it up to go the other way, it does the very same thing. So the fill goes away, just leaves the gray track for you there. Um, so that's really all it takes to make a realistic slider. Um, and these do feel really awesome on mobile. So if you make it for a mobile screen um, or a mobile size device and you're previewing it on your phone, it feels really awesome and it's super fluid. Um, I did obviously something a bit more with those numbers ticking up, which I can show you as well, um, to make this slider kind of correspond with actually something else on the screen. So that's all it takes to make a realistic slider. So what's happening is that, again, Figma is um, taking all of the elements and doing the work for you. But the reason we had a one pixel uh, fill down here and not something transparent is because if it was transparent, like 0% opacity to 100%, you'd see that fade in. But I've kept it 100% opaque um, and one pixel. So that line grows. You would see it behind this handle shape there, that that line is actually growing to fill that shape. So I think that was really cool when I first thought of like, hey, I wonder if Figma can do this. It happened exactly like this with just three shapes and a couple clickups in the prototype and it worked really well. So I was really happy about that. To do what I did with those, um, those numbers, I can show you that all that is is another frame that I've got um, some numbers in and I'm moving that frame from the top of the frame and I'm sliding it all the way to the top. So I'll go and show you how that looks. So we can go ahead and start typing. Um, I'm going to do something similar where I'm just going like 100 to 500 maybe. So we can blow this up again so it's like really obvious what we're doing. Cool. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and see, yep, cool, center that, center that. So I can just hold, click on it and hold option and drag that off. And that's going to let me take that shape and go down. Now I'm not super concerned about where it's laying right now. We'll make sure those are evenly spaced. And then from there we can do Command D, and that will replicate what I've just done there. Now you can see that it's going off the frame here. It's because I've had this clip there. We're actually going to use something like this, where we're going to clip the content. But basically we want to select all the numbers that we've got there, and hit Command Option G. So that's going to group it, but it will group it into a frame, which is um, what we need here because we need to crop that, uh, what's happening inside there, and we'll make it scrollable. A group is not as flexible. We'll go ahead and renumber this real quickly.
Okay. So all those are numbered now. We can go ahead and click on the, the whole frame layer over here. And basically I can drag this up. So you're still seeing the content, but what's happening is I'm effectively masking this. So now that I have this frame selected over here, you'll see I have that same option of clip content as I did when I clicked on this larger frame. Um, because I'm going to clip the content at the smaller scale, um, I don't necessarily have to have the frame, uh, the main frame as clipping. So I can just leave that one unchecked. But this one I do want moving. And what that allows me to do is effectively select everything inside there and move it around and the, that mask stays. So you're not masking it, you're using the frame to effectively mask it, um, but you're not using the tool mask. So that's going to that's gonna let us uh, achieve that sort of that vertical uh, shifting as we go from one slider to the other. So I'm just going to take this layer over here and copy it and paste it into place here because we want, again, everything to be in the same place and be called the same, so we have that consistent there. The only difference is I'm going to select all these numbers. So I'm not selecting the frame itself, but I'm selecting all the content within it. And I'm just going to shift it up until we hit the 500. And I'm, again, I'm not being super precise here. I'm just sort of eyeing things. And again, this is going to do all the work for us. So we said from this screen to this screen, it's going to scroll all the way from 100 to 500. Um, and we don't have to click anything up here. It's going to interpret that for us. The only thing we still have clicked up is the slider. So let's give it a go. I'm going to hit play again, and it's going to refresh that screen. And as we go, it's just going to climb up. And as we pull it back, it should climb down. Yeah. So that's how different elements can look like they're interacting together. They're not really obviously connected to one another. It's just the screen interpreting these separate actions. But that's a way that you can kind of add some realism to your slider, showing something else happening on screen as you're uh, as you're doing that. So it's not just a slider for no reason. But yeah, this transition feels really smooth. Um, it feels really good on mobile. And um, Figma can do it easily. A super easy transition that Figma handles with no problem, exactly like you think it would be handled. So it's really it's really just such a pleasure to go into this tool and, and have it work so well uh, and bring your ideas to life and make them feel realistic. This is something you certainly can't do within um, Sketch plus Envision right now. Um, maybe likely they're working towards something like that, but the, the fact that handle, uh, Figma can handle it so well is just so fun to use the tool, not just for design, but there's like really special interactions with the tool. Um, so yeah, if this is helpful to you, let me know in the comments. Um, I couldn't find anything exactly like this online, so hopefully it's useful. Um, and I'm still learning the tool, so go, go ahead and share any of your favorite transitions or secrets or animations because that is where I get a lot of joy when using this tool. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.